so, so for, for me, um, when I first came across blockchain uh, in 2016, um, it took a bit of time before I really grasped you know, the concept. Because back then, you know, uh, I think the DAO hack had just happened. Um, and um, I'm figuring out how that actually worked took a bit of time. But once I, 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 I grasped it, I thought, well, this is going to fundamentally change our society. Because all of a sudden, blockchain allows us to get rid of the intermediaries, get rid of the of of, of the, 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 the middle middleman uh, that we need in order to ensure trust between two transactions. Um, and that's basically what blockchain does. You know, blockchain allows us to, to have trust, to have provenance, provenance of a product or provenance of data. Um, or, uh, uh, and, we, and that brings the transparency that is necessary if we want to do trades with, uh, with, with people or organizations whom we don't necessarily know. Um, and I think from a supply chain perspective, uh, uh, blockchain is really is going to be the golden standard. Um, and you know, blockchain will make a supply chain so much more effective and efficient, uh, getting rid of all of the paper stack that we uh, use now when we, we ship uh, our products around the world. And it's actually quite a miracle that we have um, um, a global supply chain, which is so complex. And actually, as we notice with the pandemic, it is so complex and it can easily fall apart. Um, and it takes a long time to restart that. So we'll get that. We'll get back to a, to the same st status of the supply global supply chain as we had before the pandemic. But it takes time, and my hope is that blockchain will play an important role there in making this all more effective and, and, and efficient. So, from a, 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 a intra organization collaboration, blockchain is, as I said, the golden standard. Now, from a, um, a perspective of, of finance, uh, like uh, for example, decentralized finance, um, blockchain allows us to share, um, uh, uh, how do you say that, to, 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 to send money uh, uh, from one end of the world to the other. And just actually today, um, I was uh, reading a, a post on LinkedIn uh, where, you know, if you want to send money um, from one end to the world to the other world, the money can sort of last for weeks and it, it, can, be, uh, it, can, be, it can bounce and it can cost you a lot of money if it bounces and you get no explanations uh, from the banks whatsoever. Uh, while with, with with crypto, which is an application on blockchain, um, I can just you know uh, send that uh, that money around the world in seconds uh, for for very little cost. And I think that really democratizes um, the access to money. Um, and because mind you, there are still um, um, uh, billions of people. I think almost one point or two billion people uh, who don't have a bank account, who who cannot have the who do not have the luxury that we have of a bank account of money in, in, our, in our account that we can draw on that we can send around the world um, there are billions of people who don't have that um, and uh, blockchain and crypto will, uh, will enable that so then from a DeFi perspective i think that's sort of the next level where we try to create um, a decentralized financial services uh, uh, basically a, a copy of all the centralized services that we have but then without the intermediary, without the middleman. So that means mortgages, that means loans, that means maybe uh, you know peer-to-peer -peer lending, it means uh, 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 money, whatever you can think of. And I think that will really help um, also those unbanked to have access to the global economy. Now, to answer your, your point in terms of how this relates to the metaverse, um, I think with the metaverse, um, the fact that we have uh, now blockchain technology, that we have, they have the fact that we have this decentralized infrastructure, it allows us to own our own digital assets. You know, this is commonly referred to as non-fungible tokens or NFTs. And um, that is truly revolutionary. Um, you know, um, I'm, I'm not referring to $69 million uh, JPEGs or crazy monkeys uh, that are worth a lot that give you a lot of perks. No, I'm, I'm, I'm referring to the fact that you can prove the ownership of a particular digital asset. And that's mind blowing. Um, and because if you compare that to the physical world, when you are able to prove that you own a physical asset, for example, a house, that house moved from being a place for shelter to something that you can monetize and you can get a, a loan against it, again, a mortgage against it that you can then use to build a business. And the same applies with digital assets. When you can prove ownership, it moves from being a, a JPEG or a, or, or a digital asset to something that you can monetize. Um, so, and I think that is an absolutely crucial component for the metaverse where we have these digital assets that we can monetize. Um, and um, I think that in the coming decade, um, that will open up uh, uh, what's called the imagination age. Uh, 
Um, and the imagination age is a hypothetical age, as was coined, I think, in the 1990s. Um, but it's sort of the idea that AI takes over um, and all is left for humans is being creative, um, and hence the imagination age. And I sort of adapted that a little bit, that you know, the imagination age will allow us to be creative. Um, and with that creativity, we can turn, it, turn those into digital assets and we can monetize that. And that will democratize, uh, again, um, the, uh, the, the access to the global economy for, for billions of people. Um, and I think that's the power of blockchain. And without, without blockchain, none of this would have been possible. No, I subscribe completely. And it's interesting the way you put it in a... Ask a couple of questions there and I wanna then go to your last book. So, so we have right now, uh, you touch the major kind of trends and actually major directions of blockchain. One of the biggest challenges we're facing right now is kind of uh, the fight between centralized and decentralized systems. And you mentioned correctly the, the biggest challenge we have in terms of when it comes to even financial transactions. Uh, first of all, the lack of access to financial inclusion, uh, which is a very basic stuff, but like I said, 1.7 billion people don't have access to that. Um, and the second one is definitely the challenge we have with conventional traditional finance that is working probably increasingly worst. And, but at the same time, we have a paradox is that there's more and more money on crypto and trading on DeFi and so forth. We're talking about, well, now there's a bit of a crash, but still we're talking about over one, close to $2 trillion being traded in crypto. And that only I can pay and send money to you in crypto for the space of a couple of minutes, sometimes seconds. Whereas if in fact we are sending the transfers from my bank to Australia, it will take probably two days. And in fact, the money can be lost. Actually, I've been having a lot of problems with that myself. So, and even in between first world countries, I mean, the UK, you are in Australia. So if I send, I still have a problem between the banks of premium uh, first world. So this is creating a bit of a schizophrenic approach towards kind of creating a parallel finance and a parallel economy. Because of course, that means if you are quite, crypto savvy, you can actually beat transaction under some millions of dollars without any government knowing. And that is happening right now. If you look at the exchanges, some of the exchanges are, are trading under some billions of dollars and they have very sl small uh, compliance or even if they have great compliance, not their fault, the governments cannot track things. So how do you see that part particularly? It's more on the financial side, but this includes a lot of questions in terms of work because let's say, for instance, I'm paying part of some parts of even teams that is easy to pay them in USDT than actually to pay them in US dollars. So it's a big challenge right now. How do you deal with this? And of course, this is going to be increasing more difficult and more challenging with NFTs, with digital worlds like metaverse worlds and so forth. So I want to touch that before we merge to the book. You cover a lot of very, very important topics, Denise. And I think that's... Um, um, you know, uh, one of the reasons that I'm uh, a new venture that I'm currently working on, um, uh, which is called the Digital Futures Institute, uh, which is a sort of a research institute focused on ensuring a, a fair digital future for everyone. Uh, because all the problems that you just mentioned don't point into, the, into that direction. Because you're absolutely right. DeFi at the moment is very, very difficult. Um, um, uh, DeFi has a very much UI and UX problem, you know? Um, I think, uh, and one of the reasons why it's not very uh, very much use at the moment, I think early this year, about 5 million people or so were using it, um, is because of this. And you need to be quite tech savvy if you want to understand how to open a wallet, how to uh, uh, buy crypto, um, how to get verified on these exchanges, um, how to protect your wallet so that, you know, you, you, your wallet doesn't get hacked as it happened on Solana a couple of, a couple of days ago. Um, um, so you have to be very, very tech savvy. That is, uh, that is a problem. Um, and if um, uh, the objective of blockchain is, and I think should be, to um, you know, open up uh, the global economy for you know, also the, 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 all those unbanked, but also those non-digital native people, which are still into the billions of people, because also don't forget, there's still a couple of billion people who don't have access to the internet at the moment. Um, we need to create a fair digital future. And, and this goes beyond not only DeFi, uh, it is also related to AI, it's also related to, to uh, data collection, data extraction, um, um, and it, 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 it covers a lot more, but I think the problems that you mentioned are real. And we need to have 
um, uh, from a DeFi perspective alone, we need to um, you really up our game uh, in terms of UX and UI, and it should be as easy as using the DeFi as it is as you use your credit, your credit card online today. Yeah, when, when we first had credit, credit cards online uh, um, about 20 years ago, um, everyone was very wary on, on using your credit card online because it might have gone wrong and it was difficult to use. And I remember that my parents, um, you know, they very much didn't like using that uh, at, at that point of time. Um, um, and, and that's sort of where DeFi is at the moment as well. Uh, and we need to make that shift. We need to make that, that next step, next iteration uh, to make it accessible for everyone.